I pulled out on that road driving north from Palm Desert that morning with the same dreams I'd had five years before. Just a different truck, a different woman by my side, a lot wiser and a little more worn. The heat from the desert sun burned down on that old 65 Chevy half-ton truck. The tape deck was plugged into the cigarette lighter and I smiled at Gypsy Lady and she reached over and gave me a kiss as the miles rolled by and the town of Palm Springs disappeared in the rearview mirror. From teachers to preachers and mountains to beaches, from a small town in Oklahoma to Los Angeles, I had become an adventuring soul with a song in my heart and a story to tell. From California to Utah and then to Aspen, Colorado, we camped and sang and made love. Every day was a new view. We pulled into Aspen and drove right on through. Straight up the pass to Leadville, a strange little town with a long, crazy history. Leadville was almost a ghost town. A handful of hard rock miners lived there with a lot of lost dreams from the silver strike of the late 1800s. You can smell the past when the wind blows down Main Street. You can see faces in the old, closed-down hotel windows. You can hear the music from a hundred years ago, feel the warmth of the saloon girls and taste the whiskey on their lips. Greed built Leadville and corruption left it dry. 14,000 feet up into the Rockies, the silver is gone now, but the memories live on to this day. There's always a need for money. Is it the need for money that causes a hooker to reach out for the arms of a stranger? Or is it the need to be touched by another? Do they believe the lies as they look in the eyes of a man who's gone down to the gutter? Does a man who has traveled from pillar to post and is almost as lost as a ghost need the warmth and the lure of love as he lays down beside some child's mother? Mountain John and Gypsy Lady shook the dust of lead bill off their boots and headed south. The old Panasonic cassette tape deck was perched on the dash as the nitty-gritty dirt band sang us south to Eagle's Nest, New Mexico. The rivers and the creeks moved by slowly as the old truck hummed and swayed to the tune of a new song in my head. The summer breeze blew through the window as I reached over and touched the warm, healing hand of the gypsy lady who rode beside me. She cried at night for her children, even though she knew she would see them by November, never come between a mother and her kids. It took me four years to learn that lesson. Don't try to adopt another man's family. When a woman separates herself from her children, even love and dreams can't fill the world in her heart. Eagle's Nest, New Mexico, has always been a stopping point for me. It sits on the Cimarron Pass and is always a place for gas, food, and lodging. The road moved on, and around each bend was a sight that pushed the emotions further than the last. One incredible piece of history after another appears as one crosses this country. The grasshopper's life is a funny thing. If you pull over on the side of the road at sunrise in the Oklahoma panhandle in the summer, you'll meet Mr. Grasshopper. You might find him perched on top of a fence post or on your pant leg. His legs are funny and bent, and he can jump very fast. Where does he find a drink of water? What does he eat? Crickets are a lot like that, too. Turtles try to cross the highway in front of a truck that can move 70 miles an hour. I like to call them thump-thumps because that's the sound you hear if you hit one. These creatures live just fine in the middle of nowhere. The Native Americans have stories passed down through generations about these creatures. I suppose if one walks across the prairie for hundreds of miles, you would have many stories about coyote and grasshopper, cricket, snake, and all the things that rustle in the tall grass and call to one another in the night. We crossed Oklahoma, and as we did, 
my mind often turned to thoughts of pioneers. My grandparents crossed from the east in wagons at the beginning of statehood. Papa? Yes, Bessie? Do you suppose the children will like it here? Well, Bessie, I suppose they will. They'll be free, Bessie. This big, wide world will be theirs, Bessie. I hope so, Papa. I hope so. Bessie, get the rifle. We might scare up a rabbit for supper. Hurry now, Bessie. Yes, Papa. I imagine no drug stores, no grocery stores, no doctors, no towns, no water, no heat, no roof. Just stars and sand and dust and grasshoppers. An occasional rabbit probably tasted fine, cooked with some wild onions.